And what I wanted to share with you today is this idea of body being our home and how to learn to live in our body in a way that we can achieve the maximum positive experience. I had extremely difficult relationship with my body throughout my late teenage years, but I think even before that, I started before that. And then in my 20s as well, up until my early 30s. And so this is a battle that I have intimately experienced myself. So I just wanted to kind of say that. So you and I have gone through the same experience that I'm talking to you from the point of view where I was the one who had extreme issues with my body. So, so this basically is, is the method and the way of thinking is quite easy to understand and quite easy to implement in a practical way in our lives. So this concept of your body being your home. If we start to think about our body as a home for our soul, for our being, for our consciousness, if you will, and then we also understand that, okay, this is our body. Let's say this is a home that we got for ourselves or we were given. And this is the home that we will have to spend the rest of our lives. So basically, this part is to kind of like to introduce the idea that um, without thinking about super advanced technologies that can move consciousness, <laughs> open up for the idea that it does us little good hating our body and hating basically our home if this is the home for our consciousness for the rest of our lives. Instead, what we should do, we should start treating it as this place where we stay for extended period of time. And also how do we deal with the things that we don't like and how we start to see the positive things that we may have not appreciated before and we start to like these things. Okay, so I made some notes. So the first exercise is acceptance that, okay, this is our body and we get to live in this body. So, and this is our home. I would like you to come with me and do this short exercise that will help you to uh, experience the body as your home. So if you just sit your, with your back straight, sit comfortably and then just take a breath in, take a breath out, keep your eyes closed or soften your gaze. And now imagine that your consciousness is somewhere in your head. Most of the people we experience our consciousness, our being somewhere here. When we speak, we, we feel like we speak from here. And now imagine that your body is kind of like a container. And so, like where your skin is, that's a limitation of that container. You can almost imagine that your consciousness is something alive, you. Like you can imagine yourself as kind of like a bubble or a circle. And imagine that you live in this container and you can move where you want. So you can even try to do this exercise and imagine that you have this, you yourself, you are in this little ball of light. You can kind of shrink yourself, whichever way you picture yourself, you're in this small ball of light. And then you get to travel in your body. So you get to travel somewhere in your head, you get to travel down your throat, somewhere you get to experience 
what it's like to be in an area where it's in your chest. You get to travel in one of your arm, come back, uh, move to another arm, come back, uh, go down where your torso is. What does, what does it feel like for your consciousness to be in your belly? Travel in your left thigh, in your left calf, in your left feet. Come back up to, to your pelvis area, what it's like to be in there. Then travel down your right thigh, then travel in your right calf, then travel in your foot. And then you can come back up, all the way up, through the torso, through your heart, through your neck, go back into where your consciousness is. And you can try this exercise for a little bit longer and just kind of like keep, keep it light and uh, don't be too rigid about it. But just imagine that that consciousness is... A bubble that can live in the body and it can use the body and it can travel through the body okay so once you finish this exercise you will start to understand that okay the way you feel you you yourself is not just your body you are consciousness that gets to use this body and you get to experience physical life by using this body. Consciousness is not restricted to the physical self. Consciousness can travel freely back and forth in a time in the different places, talking about remote viewing and um, going back in time, future potentials and all of that. But this is not the topic of today. <laughs> today is the topic how to start understanding your body as a vehicle that you are in and how to start to have good relationship with it. Okay, so once you've done this exercise, you can then start thinking that, okay, you are you and you get this house, this body to live in. And it doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done. Uh, that's what you got right now. This house that you got is in this state and it's yours and you get to use it. So just kind of like uh, sit for a moment with this understanding that you get to use your body to experience this life. It's almost as if, okay, you're giving a house and you are allowed to live in the house. And also you're allowed to make changes in the house. So that takes me to second part which is a second exercise that we can do together and this is basically exercise reviewing what needs to change improvements so for example if you have a bad relationship with your body and if you have bad relationship with yourself having this body but imagine you are a person who moved in this body and now you get to look through this body, through this house and see what improvements and what kind of changes you want to make. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So for example, you go into your body, you can again close your eyes and just kind of like a scan your body and to start to feel where where do you feel good about yourself where this house this container the house where this house feels good for you and where is not okay so for example you go aha uh -huh, okay this feels good okay my arms okay i don't really feel so good because there is like too much of fat tissue Okay, so home improvement, house improvement, this building improvement that needs to be made is, okay, what we need to, we need to change material. Okay, how do we change material? Okay, there are ways to change material, go to the gym, change the diet. We go further, we scan, we see, uh -huh, I, have, I have a bit of a belly. Okay, what can I do about it? Uh, 
I actually would like, for example, my waist to be small. Okay, there are a number of things that you can do, uh, surgical and non-surgical. Um, everybody kind of decides and chooses what is best for themselves. Um, however, then you can kind of check and feel, okay, so, uh, so I don't like this part and there is something that I want to do about it. I have this number of choice. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to take? So it's almost like when you start to think about your body as a house and you kind of decide what kind of changes you want to make with that house. So, for example, if there is a bit too much of a front porch and you don't like your porch to be so big, <laughs> what you can do, you can do some kind of reconstruction. It's going to take some time, it's going to take some work, but you can actually do it. So it's kind of like it um, activates the problem solution focused thinking. So there are some things that you can do about your body. And, and this exercise, when you scan your body, when you scan this house and then you see, okay, I would like to change this. I would like to change that. I would like to change this. Think like an engineer, think like an architect, think like an architect who moved in a house where it can make some improvements. It cannot really necessarily break the walls and rebuild the house, but it can work with the house by improving the structure of the house, by getting rid of some things that maybe is not to their taste and maybe adding some other things that they want to have. For example, muscles. Uh, for example, let's say you would like to have a better hair. So it's almost like thinking about gardening. Um, you don't like your hair. What can you do about it? You don't like the garden that you have. <laughs> or it's not very nice lawn. What can you do about it? You can put some seeds, you can water them, you can look after them. You make sure it's a good quality fertilizers that you use. And it's the same, for example, would work with your hair. Okay, so you would like more volume or you would like more um, vitality. Okay, what can you do? You can put some fertilizer, uh, vitamins, for example, in your body. You can water them. You can drink more water. You can use some products that are gentle, for example, but you need to kind of put this type of care and then it will be nicer one way or another. The third part is acknowledging what is good about it. So it is benefits. So there can be benefits to any type of house. For example, if you have a small house, it means, okay, maybe it doesn't take that much heating. Maybe the bills are not going to be so high. Maybe it's going to be cozy, going to be easy to find things, easy to come from one side of the house to another. You don't need to go too far. If you have a large house, it's great because you have uh, lots of space. You can bring some friends in a house. You can have a guest room. You can have a walk-in closet. If you have a very tall house, three floor house, you can have access to the first floor. Then also you may have a good view from the top floor. So this is just a kind of like a, to say that is the same with your body. So for example, you have a tiny body, you're small and you're not very tall. Okay. You know what that means? You need less food, you are more petite, you actually are able to, for example, wear some cute styles that only works well with the petite type of body and not so much with people who have a large frame. Even though you can make some changes, there are some things like, for example, like your bone structure, the general genetical way that you have developed that might not be possible to change even though these days with the technologies and the, the diets and uh, bodybuilding and everything there are amazing things that you can do let's go to the other side you have a body that is very large you have a really tall frame big frame 
and uh, you are a woman and then you think oh my god I'm just so for example tall and I wish I would be more feminine or something then what you can think think about it okay how is it good to have this big tall body you know what I look powerful I can look really powerful and really impactful with this body kind of like a Amazon so you know there are kind of like a different ways of seeing benefits in a different qualities so what I invite you to do is not necessarily start to think like I'm short and I want to be tall so now I need to go and get a surgery of my bones in China but to think okay so what I can do maybe I can I want to be taller maybe I can start attending yoga that tends to <laughs> straighten your spine and then you gain a couple of centimeters yeah maybe I would like to wear uh, heels or shoes that has a little bit more height but the main message here is to see how what you got is beneficial and is unique to that type of quality so whatever, however you identify yourself because I think the acceptance is, is the key thing you accept okay they, you get this body and you get to use this body you got it and then it's true that you can make some adjustments but it is also true that there are some limitations how much change you can make so what I'm suggesting is basically a combination of both including this acceptance and also gratitude that I know that gratitude cannot be forced but perhaps there could be something positive that can come out of starting to see how you having what you have puts you on a certain benefit and and use whatever angle you need to use you use whatever you don't have to be objectively right what you need to do is be subjectively positive about what you got so that's kind of like a very big one part and now I want to kind of add another aspect to all of this process now imagine imagine that this house is alive this house that you live in and you get to use is alive but you can not just kind of like do things to it but you can actually work with it it can actually help you how it can work best for you for example if you feel that um, your body has accumulated too much fat you as a, as a consciousness as a um, person who lives in a body what you can do you can actually start talking to your body you can kind of close your eyes for and you can do that for any kind of like a physical problem or the quality or anything like that close your eyes take a breath in take a breath out in out and then you can ask your body to tell you why have you accumulated this extra fat I'll tell you what my body is, is gonna say okay for example my body says and that because I kind of need to hide myself so when you hear when you feel this intuitive flash of what your body is trying to communicate to you it doesn't have to be necessarily a word you might just get the feeling like when you ask that question okay why you will get for example emotion coming up what I experienced just now I have a bit of extra fat my weight is normal um, 
I managed to be like now in a normal brackets of the weight <gasps> over over last uh, probably 10 years or so. Um, however, I have a bit of extra fat tissue, which I do and I exercise and then I sometimes think, okay, what's what's going on and why I still have it. So for example, what I done now, I went directly and I asked this question, basically why this is needed, why my body decided to actually take that. So now I know that, okay, there is an emotional reason for that. There is an emotional root cause for that. Okay, I need to hide. So that means there is still something in me subconsciously, so subconscious that uh, my body probably doesn't feel completely safe to not to hide or not to have that possibility to hide. Perhaps I would feel like I am too exposed or too um, too much seen too much. And that's actually very accurate because um, there is a psychological emotional issue that I have been working through about being seen, being uh, recognized, kind of like a stepping out and shining my light. So that that uh, message from my body is very accurate. So for example, in my case, now I got information that, okay, the extra fat that I have in my body is because there is still some feeling that I somehow need to hide. Okay, that's brilliant because that gives me a uh, direction where I should, if I wanted to resolve it, to go emotionally to dig for. Okay, okay, so let's now open up. Where do I not feel completely safe to be seen? Why do I feel that I need to have this option to hide or this, this extra fat kind of helping me to feel like I have place to hide. The most effective ways in changing your body, in my personal opinion, is not just emotional psychological work, it's the combination of both. Taking action and the action taking is, is not one off. Personally, I feel like the most effective uh, strategies are where we decide to take an action and we take that action continuously. So basically decision to change something in our lifestyle. I'm going to drink more water or for example, I'm going to do 15 minutes stretch in the morning or for example, I'm going to go for half an hour to walk every day. And even as you do that, you can actually be very conscious during that time that this is the time that you are now dedicating to your house, to your home, to your to your body, to your vehicle. And when you do that, you will also increase this feeling of self-acceptance, of acceptance of your body. Yes. So basically those are the key points that I had to share with you today. Um, I am very passionate about living fully integrated life, not only as a spiritual being, but also as a physical being. And I think sometimes we actually forget that we also have a body and sometimes we also forget that our body wants to participate in this life or that it is created to help us experience this life. And sometimes we don't even have uh, tools or knowledge how to work with that. Lots of us at some point may have felt or may still be feeling like uh, my body is going against me. My body is my enemy. My body is doing something for me or is not obeying me or being horrible to me or somehow I am imprisoned in my body. And while all of those feelings are absolutely valid and accurate, from subjective point of view, because if you feel like that, that's how you feel like that. There is no uh, discussion about it. Uh, another um, idea to introduce to all of that is what if body is not against you? What if your body is for you? And if you know, if you fully knew that your body was here for you, how would you then interpret what your body is doing? 
what your body is communicating to you, why it's doing what it's doing, if your body were for you, not against you. Okay, so this is all that I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you like it, like it. <laughs> if you have questions, ask questions. And then if you feel inspired to connect, please feel free to send me a message directly.